This is my Earl Spence documentary. They'd rather take a lie with the truths in their face. Yes, this is a documentary of Earl the True Spence from beginning to now. This your boy up at Echelon. Y'all hit the like, share, subscribe button. And I appreciate all the super thanks. Y'all, the super thanks let me appreciate let me know y'all appreciate the work that I do. Makes me want to go harder and grind harder for y'all. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all that support the channel and that watch the show. This your boy up at Echelon. Let's get into the video. I ain't gonna hold you up any longer. You get jaws out there. Now you think it's safe. No, Jaws ain't the epitome of greatness. There's something out there much bigger. Yes, you got it. And here comes Superbug. Come through and snatch it up. All is well in the world, right? Or wrong. You forget the Megalodon. Bud might have caught Jaws in the Ikea swore, but he ain't ready for the Megalodon. And that's the big spitz. The Megalodon. Matter of fact, he ain't even a Megalodon. Earl Spence is the biggest. How can you measure what ain't been measured before? Captain Ahab reaching out fishing. You gonna catch something that you ain't mean to catch right there because you can't catch the uncatchable, the Leviathan. Earl, the true Spence. Strap season, man down, smoking on Bud Tour. Earl, they say you just a basic come forward flat footed fighter. They said Crawford's gonna beat you. Now that you done beat Crawford and destroyed him, what the haters gotta say now, Earl? You can do it, Jordan. And you beat the real champion. What's the treacher? Somebody sent for us out. What a What started out as a joke has turned out to be a disaster. Green appears to be in very serious condition. It's a man to die. Crawford's in a serious condition. You heard him worse than Kilbrook and Ugas combined. If he dies, he dies. the dressing room. Here to comment on how you plan to fight. Terrence Crawford. It's your strategy. Don't need any. Terrence Crawford. The man comes straight ahead. He's telling me for me. And he's gonna get hurt. What's your prediction for the fight? Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. At the age of 16, one day his father walked in and said, Get up, let's go. Earl Smith Jr. didn't know what his father had in mind. But he took him to an all Mexican gym called the V Vavero, where he was the only black fighter. They was rough on him in sparring and giving him a hard time, but he made his mark. Then he started working with the illustrious Derek James. He has strength, he has power, he has speed. He's got the possibility of changing boxing. He had an illustrious amateur career with the record of 135 and 12. In 2009 at the U.S. National Golden Gloves, he came with a gold record. He won three consecutive national amateur welterweight championships. In 2009, he got the gold at Salt Lake City. 2010 Little Rock, he got the silver. 09 in Denver, the national championship, he got a gold. Colorado Springs, 2010 gold. Colorado Springs, 2011 gold. Also in San Antonio at the USPLE Championship, he got a gold medal as well. In 2011, in the quarterfinals, he lost to Sarek Sapayev, the two-time golden champion from Kazakhstan. This was his last amateur fight before he went into the Olympic trials in 2012. A fan of boxing, me and my dad, uh, I grew up watching uh, Lennox Lewis, because uh, he's a uh, Jamaican descendant, and my dad's Jamaican too. So we should always go and watch him and go support him. Errol Spence is ready for the Olympics. But the question is, will the Olympics be ready for Errol Spence? We only have to sit back and see. He's almost like the perfect boxer. Boxing needs a new face, and I think that Errol Spence is that face. With his family watching in the state of Texas on his back, Earl puts himself through the grueling training and does what needs to be done. I'm a very aggressive boxer. Um, if I see my have my opponent hurt, uh, 
I would take risks and go in there and uh, try to get them out of there and knock them out. Uh, I'm a person that uh, hate to lose, hate to lose anything. So uh, that's my motivation right there. I'm a very smart thinker. I think a lot too. Uh, I can read my opponent real well. Just all around, just a, a box of punching. My dad uh, woke me up one day. He was like, "You want to? You, uh, you we going to the boxing gym?" I didn't like it at first. I used to get beat up a lot. He wouldn't let me quit. He said, uh, "If you quit this, it, when it get hard, then you get quitting anything in life." So uh, he made me stick with it, and it turned out to be the best thing I ever done. With the great Derek James teaching and his father firmly behind him, Earl Spence set off to make history, set out to bring the gold back to the United States. Early in the morning before dawn, he goes out and runs, and late at night, he's the first one in and the last one to leave. He is fully motivated. That's what keeps him different. And it sets him apart from everybody else. Controversy saw Earl Spence March to the goal stopped short. In a fight that he clearly won, even the ref thought he won and raised his hand up first, he was pronounced lost. The governor bodies went back in and changed the decision, but it was too late. The damage was done and Spence coincidentally lost the next round. After that, he chose to turn pro and set up his national debut as being the greatest welterweight ever. Spence would then subsequently string together three more first round knockouts, Guillermo Ibera, Eddie Cordova, and Jesus Tavera. In a step up fight against Emmanuel Larte, he got a unanimous decision where Spence was hit the hardest of his career, where he was rocked, but it didn't have the effect that Larte wanted. All it did was cut the dynamite on and he Spence exploded on him. First round knockout of Guardo Cruz, a fourth round knockout at Peter Aluch at the Cowboy Dance Hall. Then had two fights at the Joint Paradise Casino, first round knockout of Raymond Charles, and a second round knockout of Noe Bolanos. A 10 round unanimous decision against Ronald Cruz, and then he subsequently made his debut at the NGM Grand Garden Casino against Francisco Castro who he then knocked out in the fifth round. Next, he made his Barclays debut, where he knocked out Senor Vargas in the fourth round. Back to the MGM Grand, Phil LaGreco in the third round. People want to see how good Spence really is. They keep calling for the big names, and Spence is on a hunt for the title shot, but the title bearers are not trying to see him. So, he has a step-up fight at the Richo Coliseum in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, against Chris Van Herden, a beautiful fight in which he hurt Van Herden numerous of occasions. The South African fighter tried to make it a dirty fight, plenty of mugging in the Coliseum in Toronto. He then drops his hands and rolls his shoulders like he was doing the Harlem Shake when Spence bounded him to the body. Instead of clowning around, he looked more like a pinata when he was getting pounded out into the eighth round. Stoppage, which saved Van Herden from taking more punishment because it was a lose-lose situation. The Spence was too powerful. Next, they chose to put Spence in there with former welterweight world champion Chris Algieri's at the Barclays Center. Errol Spence was 20-0 with 17 knockouts and did what Manny Pacquiao and Rosalind Provitnikov could not. Spence stopped Chris Algieri's 21-3 with a punishing and professional demolition job to earn a fifth round TKO victory. Spence forward Algieri three times in the fight and the boxing world exploded with praise for the former Olympian with his fight. It now seems that Spence is now at the top of the steps and he's looking to make the name for himself. Now, he's searching for the champions, looking for his mark on greatness. His greatness was being noticed. The great Floyd Mayweather took an interest in Spence and used him to prepare for an upcoming title match. He was able to see the young champion's true potential and marked on his journey together. You know, at first I came in, kind of caught me off guard. I said, okay, I see, I see. When I got in the ring with Floyd and I was going tick for tack with him and, you know, we was going eight, 10 rounds. And um, I just knew, I was like, man, if I can do this for Floyd, I can do this for anybody. 
want to step up and fight him for one of my belts, they can do that. If not, he's going to fight another opponent. But I'm, I'm going to make sure he's going to fight for that title. If Floyd destroyed guys in sparring and des destroyed ex-world champions in sparring, and I'm doing this great with them, you know, I, you know, my ceiling is high. I can be just as great as Floyd Mayweather. August 16th, 2016 at the Barclays Center scene, a 20-0 Earl Spence versus a 33-1-2 Leonard Bundy in an IBF Eliminator. On May 16th, Earl was scheduled to go against Konstantin Pronovic, but he pulled out with an injured hand. So that left Spence against the wily veteran Leonard Bundu. Spence struggled early with Bundu's switch hit and come forward style, but he stayed with the jab to set up thundering lefts and rights to the body. He had Bundu pinned against the rope. Middle of the sixth round, Spence hit him with a jaw shattering short left uppercut that knocked Bundu down. Referee Johnny Callis erroneously calls the shot a slip. Bundu was clearly hurt and without a chance to shake the cobwebs out, Spence immediately attacked. <laughs> Sending the 41 year old opponent to the ground, to the upper room with a lights out right hook. Laying on his back, hanging beneath the bottom of the ropes in a KO. Spence did what Thurman could not and stopped Bundu in half the time. This was his eight consecutive stoppage. Now, <laughs> he becomes the immediate mandatory challenger for Kell Brooks, also effectively ending Leonard Bundu's career at the time. The unified welterweight champion now, and the most wanted man is each in the welterweight division. You know, I mean, it's a great feeling. At the end of the day, it didn't come overnight. We really had to work for this position. So me and my team were truly proud. And boxing is my life. It's what I dedicated ever since I was a kid growing up, seven years old. I'm 28 now. So it's 21 years in the game, man. This is my life. I'm living the dream right now, being the unified champion of the world. And it feels good to be Keith one time third. Listen, I, I know you got mandatories. The winner of this main event becomes your WBC mandatory for that belt that you have. Yes, you have a WBA mandatory. Let's put all that aside. If Keith Thurman has his druthers and he's saying he can pick his next opponent, who you fighting? You know, just being the kind of fighter I am, I always see two things that really matter. One is fighting legends. That would bring up names like Floyd Mayweather, who he's only talking to McGregor about fighting, so let's not talk about him too much. But Manny Pacquiao's still active. A lot of people think that he should leave the game, but I think if he wants to leave the game, he should go out with a bang and he should let a young buck who really wants to be the best fighter in the world, he should go toe to toe. And outside of that, we still have more world champions in the welterweight division. One being Kel Brook overseas. Your boy Errol right here sitting next to me, he's going to try to bring that belt back to the United States. And then maybe we can have another unification bout right here. Who knows? Maybe in New York, maybe in a bigger venue. But, I mean, when it comes to the walkerweight division, there's a lot of great fights, and your boy Keith one-time Thurman is trying to make those great fights happen for him. Title. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So, you know, we're, we're chucking the right hand because chocolate brownies, <laughs> right? I don't, want them, I don't want it to be damaged. I want to give it to Errol Spence, clean cut, just being baked. I want it to be made. That's why I didn't let that, that right angle. I want it to be crisp so it tastes, the, tastes every bit of that shit. What Brooks there. didn't count on is that the 21 and 0 Earl Spence would eat the chocolate brownie and ask for seconds. Earl Spence scored an 11th round knockout over Kell Brook to claim the IBF Welterweight title at Bramall Lane Soccer Stadium. The official time was a minute and 47 and Spence was ahead on all three scorecards, 96-93, 97-92, and 95-94. He dropped the Englishman in the 10th round with a flurry and continued to work on that left eye until the stoppage. In the 11th round, Kell Brooks suffered a broken orbital like he did when he fought Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, who broke his right orbital in that fight. I proved tonight I had chin and I have true grit, says Spence in the post-fight interview. He came over to America to take the title from Sean and I came to the UK to take the 
the title back to America. 35-3-1, Lamont Peterson vacates his regular WBA title that he earned by beating David Avenesium to fight for Spence in his IBF title. Earl the True Spence defended his 147 pound title for the first time as he stopped former two division world champion by an eighth round TKO. He outboxed a tough Peterson from start to finishing, showcasing the wire skills of speed and power. The fight was stopped prior to the start of the eighth round after Peterson's trainer. Hunter called for the stoppage. The fight played out similar to how both fighters predicted. Started in a cagey tactical affair before it turned aggressive fight in the middle rounds. Two minutes into round five, Spence used a blistering left hook to send Peterson to the canvas. The Washington DC native returns his feet and continued the battle, but Spence proved to be too much. The 2012 US Olympian outlanded Peterson 161 to just 45 while connecting on 49% of his power punches and just 31% for Peterson. Peterson fought valiantly against the younger, respecting the decision of his trainer to stop the fight. If he asked me to fight a million people, I will. If he asked me to stop, I will stop. I never questioned his decision. I know he has my best interest at heart, says Peterson of Barry Hunter. Talks of an up and coming mega fight between 23 and 0 unbeaten Spence and 22 and 0 Carlos Ocampo. Frisco, Texas. Earl Spence defended his IBF welterweight championship with a first round knockout of undefeated mandatory challenger Carlos Ocampo in a homecoming fight on Showtime at the Ford Center Star. The sellout crowd of more than 12,600 fans packed the Ford Center at the Star to witness Spence's first homecoming defense as champion for his fight in Dallas since 2015. Pounding the body from the opening bell with his trademark body attack and superb ring generalship, Spence, who was making the second defense of his 147-pound title, floored Ocampo with a beautiful one-two shot combo. Second punch landed flush on the challenger's side, instantly flooring him as the opening round concluded. Ocampo, who was 22-0 with 13 knockouts, crippled over in pain while on the canvas, was unable to beat the count and remained on the floor for more than two minutes while Spence celebrated his victory. Spence later told reporters that he was a little disappointed. He wanted to give the crowd their money's worth. He wanted him to sustain a bit and give him some punishment, but the body shot got him and I dropped him. That was the ninth time that Spence, 24-0 with 21 knockouts now, has floored an opponent with a body shot in his 24 fights. If I hit him again, he will probably drop, said Spence. That was my game plan. I'm the body snatcher. And yes, Earl Spence is the body snatcher. We all have heroes, and every man's biggest dream is to show his heroes that he's on the level. And everybody's worst nightmare is for your hero to look past you and think that you're not on the level. Okay, I gotta see this. Mikey. I'll be disappointed if it does not. Mikey Spence, coming up in a two weeks. Mikey. Mikey. Why? You know what? Because he's Mikey. You know, that, that's simple. It's been See, the thing is, is that Spence don't move his head. Mm. Spence's head is always there. It's always there to be hit. You know, Mikey's a really good counter puncher. You know what I mean? Spence will, Spence will throw, and then he's right there. He stays there. You know what I mean? He like that. He'll catch a couple. He'll catch a couple. But he's right there to be hit right down the middle. 
with everybody thinking Spence is just some come forward bull Mexican style fighter, Earl sought to prove the haters and the naysayers wrong to show that he is more than just a bulldozer, to show that he has finesse, crass, and technique, and that he could go toe to toe with the best there is out there and beat the best at their own game. Earl Spence made the battle against pound for pound great. Mikey Garcia looked all too easy for his IBS welterweight belt. Earl Spence 25 and 0 with 21 knockouts, going against a 31, 39 and 0 with 30 knockout Mikey Garcia at AT&T Arlington Stadium in Texas. With everybody choosing Mikey Garcia to beat Earl Spence because of his boxing ability, Earl Spence basically shut him out for 12 rounds. He showed off his brilliance. His jab was powerful. He mixed up the shots to the head and the body. He used quick, smart footwork to keep Garcia off balance for the entire night. After the bout, Spence brought Manny Pacquiao in the ring and said it would be an honor to fight him next for the pay-per-view broadcast. Pacquiao was diplomatic in response, but he seen that the fight could maybe happen. It was a humbling night for Garcia, who said, I see something. The first loss of his career, he made a bold decision to come up one weight class from the 140 to 147 for Spencer's IBF title. He got a lot of praise, but heavy skepticism, and he dared to be great, which a lot of people said, and he got credit for it, but he dared to be great against the wrong one. Spence, who was overweight in camp, had to have a fat camp, and he didn't get to get strength and conditioning, which saw the fight go to distance, and he didn't stop the smaller Mikey Garcia. But the numbers confirmed that everybody saw in the ring that Spence totally dominated. He landed 345 punches to Garcia 75, and it took Spence a few rounds to amp it up, but he got on cruise control once he did. And... A lot of other fighters that were scared to fight Spence, seeing that if a smaller fighter like Garcia can make it, then maybe I could. And Spence was starting to enjoy the fruits of his labors. The fast tenacity that he put in, the hard work and the training, he's starting to lack in. He's not coming as much. Just like Spence said, 50% of me is better than any of these fighters out here. And he developed a great relationship with Jerry Jones and started to get on the Superman fast track. He didn't want to be like fighters of old that enjoyed after it was over. He wanted his roses now. And Spence, as a young individual, started to enjoy his time in the shine, in the sun. After being shunned from other fighters and people didn't want to fight him, now he says a catch slogan, times have changed now. Now I'm the big fish, they gotta come for me. And with record breaking sales with Mikey Garcia's fight and Earl Spence battering around, becoming a specialist in people's eyes, only thing next is to put together a fight with Showtime Sean Porter. This would be Earl's toughest fight because this fight seen Sean Porter in training camp for almost six months, while Earl Spence enjoying his partying had to go through another fat camp. Earl had to drop almost 40 pounds while Sean Porter was in the best shape of his life. And this fight was much more than just two belts on the line. This was Sean Porter getting his dad's approval from all the years when he chose Earl. But this fight would go down as one of the best fights of the year and one of the best fights of both guys' careers. Being the man that Spence is, he takes his opponent's strengths and take it away from him. They say he couldn't box Mikey. He boxed Mikey. They say he can't go in the hole in the pocket with Sean Porter. So he decided to do just that and take this fight into the down dirty, into the dungeon, into the hole. Spence threw 745 punches to Porter 744. That shows how even the fight was, but Spence landed 221 of those punches, which was 49 more than Porter. He also landed 44% of his power punches to just 25.7 for Sean Porter, whose inaccuracy has been a problem in an otherwise stellar career. Porter was throwing a lot, but he also was making it a rough house. And in the 11th round, Spence slipped a counter and threw a, le threw a left, which was the straw that broke the camel's hump or the camel's back. Porter's body went down 
from sheer exhaustion and all the accumulated power that he has been taking. And yes, he got back up, but the damage had been done. The mark has been done. Inside, he know he lost that fight. Spence went in there and beat that man of his own volition. Beat him at his own game. Spence is the man. He has two belts now and going for more. And now, with Keith Thurman ducking him, he only got one way but up, and he's enjoying the ride. Now the fight that everybody wants to see is Earl versus Crawford. And it's going to be a fight for the decades like Hagler Hearns or Leonard and Hearns. We need to see that fight. But some people are talking about size of the street. Hey, God. You. Oh, everybody know I'm no, no, that no, no, guy. No, you're man. not that guy. I'm that guy. Numbers don't lie and I'm the number I'm one that guy. guy. You're not the number hey. one guy. Hey. Numbers don't lie. Everybody got ESPN. Everybody got ESPN. Everybody got ESPN. Terry, who's a better basketball player? Me, me. Anything about him is me. Me, me. You can ask Ron who the best basketball player. And I killed him for the bread. You asked Ron who the best basketball player. You asked Ron who the best basketball player. I asked all the money. And I killed him for the bread. Easy way. He didn't want to play me one on one. I killed him too. He didn't want to play me one on one. I played one on one. That's what that's what we were supposed to be in there after our fights. But we, you go kind of the statistics, they coming to us. They trying to find something on me. They coming to us. We ain't going to them. They, they coming to us. They trying to find something on me. They can't find them. I like them though. Yeah, Not them. Earl Spence living a dream, flying high, hanging with rappers, just enjoying life, drinking, partying, smoking, doing everything that he wants to do, enjoying his star studdiness. Earl shot for the moon, so he's up there with the stars now, and he's enjoying every minute of it. But what goes up must come down. If you're not living it right and treating it right, then it can all turn in a blink of an eye in a flash. October 10, 2019, unified welterweight champion Earl Spence Jr. was thrown from a Ferrari during an early morning crash outside of Dallas Sports Bar. They try to say he was been drinking, but rumor has it that it had been involved in some street life, some stuff that Earl Spence, a man of his position, had no reason being involved in, and he had to face the consequences. He could have died that night. Now, getting ejected from the Ferrari, nobody knows will he ever get to walk again, talk again, will he live? How would his career be after this? Is it all over for such a bright star with such a great future who Floyd Mayweather once said, I put my belts up against anybody for this kid right here? We never know. We just got to see what happens and what's in store for Earl the Truth Spence. Junior. A lesser man wouldn't have made it. When your God's chosen, God's anointed, only God can stop you. To come out of the ashes stronger, smarter, wiser, and more focused. A phoenix. Now you realize you were put here for greatness and nothing can stop you. Now you have your purpose, your reason for being here. The only one that can stop Spence is Spence himself. Now more than a year later after the car crash, Earl Spence will be defending his WBC and IBF welterweight belt against Danny Garcia at the ATMT Stadium in Arlington, Texas, his first fight since the accident. Most fighters on a comeback fight will take a soft touch, but not Spence. Spence has to test his greatness, and if he can't go in there and battle Garcia, then he knows that he's just not gonna be a boxer anymore. So this fight means more than just the belts. For a long time and to be fighting again in my hometown means the world to me, especially as a comeback fight. 
and uh, just having my core fans and people that supported me since day one be there at the fight, man, it means everything. And I won't let this moment go to waste. For Danny, you are coming here to the Dallas area. You're from Philadelphia. It's well documented in football, the rivalry between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Do you relish the opportunity to potentially win these world titles in quote unquote enemy territory? You know, first of all, you know, before I answer your question, you know, I want to thank God for putting me on this stage and having a healthy camp and making me here to Texas, blessed with a great team and a great family. You know, I want to thank Al Heyman, I want to thank Fox, I want to thank the media, everyone who helped make this big event. With his third title of events at the AT events at the AT&T Stadium of 16,000, which was considered a sellout in the pandemic, the fight wasn't even close. Spence made the Garcia look like an amateur when he dipped in and out, throwing fast flurries of shots and not getting hit. At one time, Danny Garcia just put his hands in his pocket as Spence continued to hit him with barrage of shots after barrage. In the eighth, it looked like Spence couldn't stop Garcia, but the nutrition and being away from the ring had Earl Stamina not up the par, so he took his foot off of gas, and Danny Garcia lived to tell another day. But his body, a considerable amount of punishment, and Garcia wouldn't get back into the rings for over three years after this fight. And now Earl's ready. He invites Manny Pacquiao into the ring and then talks to him about a scheduled super fight. First had to have come through uh, between that time and now. Why have you decided to, to choose Errol Spence, a guy who's two, two belts, undefeated champion in his prime? First, uh, I would like to explain my side about uh, picking uh, Errol Spence. There's a lot of uh, opportunity to, to pick a uh, not, not easy fight, but in a uh, much easier fight than compared to uh, Errol Spence. But I decided to uh, pick Errol Spence because uh, I want to uh, give a good fight to the fans. And I want a real fight. I mean, uh, I'm a fighter and boxing is my passion. You know, Errol, I, I know that uh, after Manny Pacquiao fought Keith Thurman, you tweeted out an emoji with Fingers crossed. A, a lot of adversity you have faced to get here to this point today, but what's it like to be so close to realizing that dream? I mean, it's great. It's a great opportunity, especially, you know, coming from my accident and um, fight Danny Garcia, and then I get to fight with Manny Pacquiao, which a lot of guys is in the sweet states, and you had a lot of different guys saying that they were going to fight him next. And, um, you know, to get that call, and to say, and ask me, do I want to fight, you know, a legend like Manny Pacquiao? I said, of course. You know, why not? I didn't give it a second thought. When did you get that call? Oh, um, I got a call a few months ago. <laughs> what impresses you? You say you want the real fight, Manny. What impresses you most about Errol Spence? Errol Spence is an aggressive fighter, and um, he's undefeated, young, and dedicated to uh, his, his career. I mean, uh, He's, this is not an easy opponent, and um, he's a kind of fighter that you never underestimate. You cannot underestimate. Do you think that he is a more challenging opponent than Keith Thurman? It, it's hard to compare because uh, he's sitting uh, right over there. We got to be careful. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Keith Thurman is uh, our fight is um, you know, more uh, competitive, uh, more action. There's a lot of action in the ring, but this. Uh, opponent is different also because he's, he's a southpaw and a renewed sense of purpose thinking that the bad is behind alas the cars did not line up right for Earl the True Spence the mega fight the fight that would have made him a household name that would launch his career already great into superstardom was denied Spence he had a chance to fight the legendary Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao and send him off into a glorious sunset on his ever aging career after Pacquiao has just destroyed Keith Thurman. But we would not get to see that fight because a retina tear going into the final physical before the fight 
and Earl unable to continue the fight. The doctor wouldn't clear him for the fight. Earl, being the worry that he was, said, Hey, I still have my left eye, but alas, it was not to be. So Earl went back to the training board, got a surgery, and prepared for what was to come. And when Earl went back to the training board, Jordanus Ugas, the Cuban, had the opportunity of a lifetime thrust into his lap. See, it was already a problem with the WBA because they made Manny Pacquiao the champion in recess because he was going through political aspirations and your Danes Ugas was moved to the super champ. Everybody didn't like the fact that they dropped Manny to the champion in recess. So what better way to decide the WBA super champion than to have the champion in recess and the new super champion fight it out to be the champion. One thing for sure, two things for certain. The fight definitely didn't go the way the 8th Division World Champion Manny Pacquiao thought. He was outclassed at every round by Yadavis Ugas, beaten to a pulp. Ended Manny Pacquiao's career. Now Yadavis Ugas is the household star who took the torch from the Manny Pacquiao, which had Errol Spence watching, aggravated, training. Now Earl know he has to train that much more better so he can get what was rightfully his, the passing of the torch. Unlike in previous fights in previous years, this is the best Earl has been since the Ocampo fight. Even though he missed Manny Pacquiao fight, he kept his same fight weight. He stayed into training, going training harder and harder and he was finally able to get strict and conditioning. He hadn't had that since the Ocampo fight. So, it was going to be punishment when him and Ugas finally fought. And then the day came for him and Ugas to fight. It was a brilliant showing. Earl made a rookie mistake in the sixth round and had his mouthpiece knocked out. Earl, who was not protecting himself at all times, took two solid shots without his mouthpiece, which stumbled him into the ropes. The ref stopped the fight, got the mouthpiece back in, and Earl brought the dog out. If Ugas thought it was bad before, now he was getting hit with punishing, crippling shots in the sixth round to finish it off. Then in the seventh round, we see them going body to body. Earl came out with a crushing onslaught that made the wily Cuban put his hands in his pocket. A vicious uppercut in the seventh round cracked your Danish Ugas over the bone to his eye. After that, you can hear the Cuban scream in pain as Earl continued to bombard the eye, the ribs, which was also broken as well. Ugas was a warrior because no matter what type of pain and stress that he went through, he continued to go out there. He was ready to die on his shield because he has finally made it to the top of the mountain. Finally a champion, the man that escaped from Cuba seven times, which was a treacherous journey when people died on the boat which he was on was at the top and he was not going to go down for nobody. But Spence is not just a nobody, he's the chosen. And not only will he beat you, he will break you. And that's what he did. He broke Ugas. He almost broke the Cuban's will, but the body went out before his will went. But you have to give it to Ugas. He was game, taking crushing shots over and over and over. We've seen Earl this strong, but we didn't see him this focused. This is the Kell Brook L with the Danny Garcia and Mikey Garcia footwork and head movement and the ring IQ. Earl Spence is a complete package now because he can fight any style, inside like Sean Porter, out, outside on the back foot like the Mikey Garcia or the Danny Garcia fight in and out like the Lamont Peterson fight. Earl is a complete package, a complete monster with a defensive prowl. Earl is one of the least hit girls with. His punch to hit ratio is the best there is. He is a complete fighter who doesn't get credit for the way he moves, the way he cuts off the ring, the way he can fight on the back foot, fight on the front foot. He can fight coming forward, he can fight going to the side, he can fight laterally, he can fight any way that you want to fight, and he has bone crushing power. 
Just look at the eyes of Ugas, Garcia, Kell Brook, Lamont Peterson. A. The man is a technical punch placement juggernaut. And if you in the way, you have he would just roll right over. He's a force of nature, a force of will, his will, like a tsunami, ready to crash down and destroy everything around him. He has the most devastating style in boxing because he has a high output, a high motor, and he doesn't waste shots or energy. All his shots have purpose. It is to hurt, break, damage, maim, and destroy his opponent. A heavyweight could not stand up there and take his onslaught of punishment. So, for anyone who thinks Earl Spence it has anybody going to stop them is terribly wrong because the truth is right in front of you. But y'all people would rather take a lot. Because you can't accept it. My best. I just got to train hard, stay focused, listen to my coach, and you know, just stay out the way. What's next? Oh, well, everybody know who I want next. I want Ted Crawford next. You're gonna make that happen, huh? You're gonna make that happen. Oh, definitely. That's the fight that I want. That's the fight everybody else want. Like I said, I'm gonna get these straps. And I'm gonna go over there and take his shit too. All right. Errol, congratulations. Terrific fight this evening. Thank you, man. Now, strap season. I know what time it is, baby. Terrence, I'm coming for that motherfucking man, It's going to be a great show on by me. I'm sure he's going to put on a great show and try to put on a great performance. But like I said, I'm the biggest. He ain't catching me with no damn fishing pole. I'm flipping his whole boat. I'm sinking him. He, he better come with a, a submarine, the USR. China, everything. Cause like I said, man, I'm the biggest shark. I'm Moby Dick. I'm the king. Ain't nobody stop me. It's strap season, man down. Make sure y'all tune in. Y'all gonna see another great show. Another catch that. You saying man down on the 29th? Man down, strap me. I know the motto. Man <laughs> down, strap season. Line them up. All that, man. Big fish. <laughs> The biggest. <laughs> Fish filet. Hey, man. Hey. Fish filet. Smoking on bud. There you, there you have it. It is July 29th. It is the Put him in the dirt. <laughs> most hey, anticipated fight of the year, Dig really, of this grade. decade. It is Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. Guys, let's get a face off. Let's put the belts. Let's get us a face off and get the camps as well. Thank everybody for watching as well. Now in just a few more days, we on the eve of Earl accomplishing his dream. Undisputed, the first ever welterweight four belt undisputed champion. And Earl has been accommodating that and fighting for that his whole career. From Olympia to Undisputed. Then he's going for Canelo and the Big Bucks. Shout out to Earl Spence and shout out to everybody that's done watching this documentary. Make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you're still there. And the Super Thanks is there too. This is your boy Upper Echelon. And this is my Earl Spence documentary for the fans. I'm out.